How you doing, everybody? This is Ken Casey from the Dropkick Murphys. We're a local Boston band, and I have been asked to read you a story today. Um, it's about the greatest hockey player, in my opinion, to ever play, Bobby Orr of the Boston Bruins. When I was a little kid, he was playing, and he was the man, the greatest player to ever play. And check it out. I got a signed autograph puck by him right here. So today, in partnership with the Boston Children's Museum, I am going to read one of my favorite kids' books. So this, this is about Bobby. It's called The Boy in Number Four, and it's written by Kara Kuchstra, and it's illustrated by Reagan Thomas. Thompson, sorry. In the ice rink locker room sat the boy in number four, lacing up his skates like so many times before. He thought of all the practices, some early, some late. The drills that he would do to help him pass and shoot and skate. There were times when it was easy and others that were tough. But even when it seemed too hard, he would never give up. He'd sometimes get an injury, a broken bone or bruise. And though they did try hard to win, sometimes his team would lose. Not often, though. But the boy in the number four had a passion and a dream to one day be a hockey player on a big league hockey team. Passing, shooting, skating, his coaches led the way and taught him to respect both teams when it was time to play. For months and months he practiced. Now the game was due to start. He skated out before the crowd, excitement in his heart. The whistle blows, the puck is dropped, and off speeds, number four. Passing, shooting, skating, like so many times before. He sweeps around behind the net and up the ice he races. His skate blades flash from left to right in front of cheering faces. Another player passes. Now the puck is number fours. His eyes can see the net in front. He steadies, shoots. He scores. It's a goal for number four. A game-winning goal for the amazing Bobby Orr. And that goal right there, which is a very famous picture in real life, was the game-winning goal of the 1970 Stanley Cup Championship. And that will celebrate its 50th anniversary on May 10th of this year. Now here's some words from Bobby. I'll read them for you. When I was growing up, Hockey was a very important part of my world. During the winter months, my friends and I would play anywhere we could find ice. On Georgia Bay, or the Sagan River, or the schoolyard rink. It really didn't matter where. As long as we could play hockey, we were happy. I'd leave in the morning with my hockey stick and skates slung over my shoulders. And often my parents would say, no more than... Be home by dark. Sometimes we kept score, sometimes we didn't. But mostly our games are about the sheer joy of the play and of being able to go outside with your buddies and simply have a good time. In those days, we didn't wait for an adult to organize our social time or sports experiences. We took that upon ourselves. We were the one who's, ones who decided when to get together, which game to play, and who would be on whose team. I'm a firm believer in kids just getting out and playing any kind of sport. Being part of a team, official or otherwise, should not just be an experience for the elite player. 
It should be something every child has the chance to experience. The paintings in this book are based in large part on photos of me growing up playing hockey. I learned a lot during all those years, honing the techniques and skills that would allow me to play against grown men while I was still a young teen. But most importantly, I learned respect for the game itself and for everyone involved in it. My parents, who supported me throughout my childhood and career, my teammates and coaches, and members of the opposing teams as well. Today, thousands of kids growing up all around the world may be dreaming about making it to the NHL, and some may even succeed. But for everyone who loves hockey, young or old, regular player or spectacular, I hope this book inspires you to simply pick up a stick, get together with some friends, and have some fun playing the best game on earth. Bobby Orr. Well, I hope you liked that book. Um, Bobby's a great friend and a great, great guy and a great player. So there's lots of other books out there about Bobby you could read as well. And if you want to just hear some other stories too, you can go to bostonchildrensmuseum.org and see other people like me reading books they like. Have a great day, everybody.